Hi, everybody. I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk a little bit about treats. Uh, I know I throw the little uh, tidbits in when I'm training of what treat I'm using, but there's more to it than just um, what, you know, brand you use or whatever. So <clears throat> uh, when you're teaching a dog, especially, I mean, I'm going to talk about dogs that are motivated by food first. So when they're motivated by food, when you're training something new that you think is going to be difficult, then you want to use a high value reward or a high value treat. So it's something that you know they really, really enjoy eating and that they're going to work for. So the one that I use, uh, and, I, and the reason I'm making this little video is I've discovered something about Junie and training. So I have this, the cat stuff and it's actually uh, fresh food. You can find it in the refrigerator, in the Walmart. I bought this one at PetSmart and uh, this one seems to be really good. Like the, this, even it smells good to me as a the human, but, and she loves it. But I discovered in two training sessions recently where I'm videoing for you guys that she is almost too excited for the treat. So you really, it's a big decision-making um, at the, at the moment on the fly kind of thing you really, and you have to be aware of it. So uh, if they are too excited, then they're distracted by the treat and they're not going to, to perform as well or pay it, focus on, on you and what you're asking. They're more focused on the treat. Now she's doing okay. She's still learning, but when it was, when I was trying to work on let's go, she kept jumping for my hand and that's because she's over excited for the treat. So I, next time I do let's go and I'll record it so you can see it. I will back off the value and have it a treat that she's not so interested in, but she'd still like to have it at the end. Um, sometimes when animals or dogs are not food oriented or they're not interested in food as a big reward, you have to look <clears throat> at the kinds of things that would be interesting to them. Um, I know for the herding type dogs, even just uh, throwing a ball for them as the reward is, is what suits them more and what they're more willing to work for that playtime with you chasing, uh, retrieving it, bringing it back. Um, you just have to figure that out. And for some dogs, just a, a really nice pet. They love to be petted. And if you find the right spot on their body that brings them the most joy, then sometimes just a, a, a nice pet is, is what they appreciate most. But that's something that's very individual and that you have to figure out for your own animal. Uh, so using treats when you are first or rewards, whether it's a throwing a ball or a food reward is really, really important um, to give every single time, every single time they do what you want at the beginning of learning something new is, is very, very important. Eventually you're going to want to phase the treat out and you do this through intermittent training, uh, intermittent treating it's called. So one time you will do the task with them, they'll get a food reward or a throw the ball. The next time you do it, they will just get a nice pet on the head and a lovely smile from you and a thank you and a good dog. Maybe you do that two or three times. Then the third time you would give them the food reward again. So you're intermittently giving them that higher value reward, which would be the food. Uh, or the throwing the ball, whatever. So eventually what, what this does to the dog's brain is they're never sure whether they're going to get that reward. So they just keep working, expecting it to be, maybe it'll be this time, maybe it'll be this time and they just keep working for it. Eventually dogs will do things for you just because they want to please you and because they know they do, do they, things happen by intention or with intention with dogs, they don't like chaos. They do not like chaos. They want calm. They want uh, the expectations to be clear. They want to know what they're supposed to do. They want to be able to predict your response to their behavior. 
And so they will work for that calmness. They will work for that response from you that keeps everybody happy and safe. And I know for some of you, maybe that might be hard to really believe, but it is, it is absolutely the truth. A dog that is trained to support someone with brittle type one diabetes learns eventually that, that uh, recognizing that odor and alerting their person to take care of that impending low brings uh, a calm environment. Sometimes when people with diabetes go low and they go low very quickly, and they don't feel their lows, they can get mean, they can get nasty, they don't mean to be. It's it's often so far from the person that they truly are. But the dog doesn't like that. The dog doesn't want to be um, around their person when when they're being mean and they're they're not feeling safe. So they will practice or they will perform as soon as they sniff that change, that chemical change in that person's body, they will alert because they want things to, to stay normal and, and nice. Um, I've, I've even heard that dogs can actually start to alert low blood sugars by running and hiding because they are expecting the worst to happen and they don't want to be around. But they So you have to retrain them to provide a proactive alert that engages the, the person that they are living with, with the, the type 1 diabetes so that it can all be taken care of. Anyway, just a few little tidbits on uh, rewarding and making sure that if your dog is too excited over the treat that you're using, that you scale it back. And it is trial and error. I cannot tell you that more, um, more often. It's trial and error, and it's you figuring it out for yourself and your pet. I hope this was helpful. Thanks.